Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Dude. Oh, welcome back to my channel. So I'm here with another one of my um, junk journal digi kits. And um, yep, it's uh, available obviously in my Etsy shop now. I'm just going to move all my stuff off. I just like to always pile up these little bits and pieces on here because I just think it always looks so, so pretty when all the papers have the lace and things all over them. So let me just discard these and move them all out of the way. And then we can go through and see what you get in this kit. Now, this is a revised version of my original kit, which was the Butterfly Blue. So the Butterfly Blue I put in my shop when I very first started making digital kits. Um, and, you know, hopefully, touch wood, I like to think that, you know, I've kind of moved on with my techniques and, um, you know, kind of methods and things like that of, you know, um, creating kits and things. So I've taken that kit and I have kind of, um, yeah, revised it basically and come out with something that I think looks completely different to the original. Um, the original is no longer, you know, for sale in my shop and it's now been replaced with this one. So this is the, the kit. So it's called Butterfly Blue and um, yeah, let's have a look at it. So again, it's like the... Um, you know, the other kits that I have launched recently in that it's for sale in two separate parts. You've got the ephemera part and you've got the background pages of the kit. So these have all been printed on either 230 or 250 GSM. It's a kind of mix because unfortunately that's how my paper is. It's all just got mixed up. Um, so yeah, I and I've printed it all double-sided using some of the planar background pages to just, you know, back the, back, back the, the pages onto. So... If I just kind of run through, so this is background page number one. We have got this one. We've got this one. Now, please excuse here where, again, and I know I've explained this recently, um, when I'm printing on this 250 GSM, it really is very thick. It's, you know, it's more like a card than a paper. My printer obviously is not very happy taking it through. Um, and yeah, for some reason it then obviously likes to pull it through a little bit before it starts printing. So what happens, I lose a little bit here and of course then I end up with a gap here. And what's happened, it's then actually tried to suck through like the next piece and printed some of the next piece, if you see what I mean, onto that. So please excuse the, um, you know, the, the strange printing. It's, you know, it's, it's a printer glitch. Um, so yep, yeah, these are all the background pages super super pretty and um yeah lovely colors in this kit obviously it's um you know it's blue based it's butterfly based but yeah really really pretty and um yeah really happy with how it's come out i've obviously added florals and things which were not um you know part of kind of the original kit so it looks quite different so that is the background pages and the ephemera part, which is obviously for sale in a separate part, a uh, separate purchase, um, it's just a four page download and you get basically a couple of pages with some envelopes. Now, again, this is on that very thick card. Again, my printer sucked it through and it's chopped off the little part of the envelope. Um, but yeah, like I say, that just seems to be an issue with my printer when it's printed on this very thick card. So you get a couple of envelopes there. Um, with a couple of little journal card pieces for going into the envelopes. So kind of note cards and envelopes. And then you get all these beautiful little topper pieces. Um, again, my printer has now sucked this through and chopped off these bits, which very, very annoying. Um, but just some really gorgeous, you know, lovely colours and things on this whole whole kit and then you've got this one with the tags and the circle tags again it's sucked it through and chopped off half so very annoying um but hopefully there's enough there to kind of show you um you know the kit so yeah i hope that you like it as i say it's for sale in my shop at the moment um and it is in two separate purchases so you've got the background pages and you've got the ephemera pieces so I'm going to clear the decks and then we will have a play and see what types of things we can create with this. Okay, I'm back. Now I have to confess, this is actually a few weeks later. So yeah, I've been, I'd coffee dyed the um, kit and then it had just been sat here waiting for me to have time to come and, you know, do some more with it. So it's all coffee dyed and um, yeah, I thought what we could do, oops, let me just take this page out because that does not belong, belong with that kit. We've obviously mixed it in now with a few other pieces by accident. Hold on, let me just check what this is. 
Oh no, that's, that's fine, that's all the kit. Right, so what I thought we could do with this is just create a very kind of like basic, basic, basic journal. Um, so it's going to be more like a sort of traveller's notebook size um, and we're going to have a variety of size pages inside it. So yeah, I think what we'll do is pick some pages and um, also pick a page to have as the cover. Now I'm just thinking actually for the cover I could probably, um, yeah I was just thinking actually I could probably just take down a sort of piece and then just fold it and then I'm thinking we could maybe have a little flap over the cover like that so I'm not saying that this is going to be the um, cover but yeah I mean that's quite pretty isn't it with the the butterfly there so maybe we will have it like that so if we were to use this as the cover and I'm going to just try and fold it in in the center of that butterfly more or less like that <clears throat> okay and then what I want to do is trim off so that I have a you know folding flap so I think what I'm going to do is just cut down here on this edge just like that so that basically the size of my actual journal is smaller if that makes sense so that's the guide for the size of the journal I'm just going to raise my camera slightly and then this bit is going to fold over as a little foldy flap like that so yeah okay so that is my basic my basic journal there and we've got the closure here now if you can probably see I mean I've left a little bit of a space it's not kind of flush with that edge which I'm hoping is going to kind of give me just a little bit of room for when my pages go inside here so that's that's the plan now obviously I've got this strip down here which is white where of course it didn't kind of print to the borders again I'm just going to ignore that and hopefully you know work kind of with that so yeah we're just going to kind of um, ignore the fact that that's happened so let's take some of those background pages and all we want to do now is make some pages to put inside the journal so what I'm going to do is keep it folded over so as I see roughly how big the pages can be because obviously the biggest they can be is like there if that makes sense so like that okay and then again just squish that down now as I say this has been printed on 250 GSM so it's quite nice and thick now I'm just going to take this down here like that okay and then what I could do is actually make <clears throat> a little pocket with this side so again just going in and just folding that straight over there and that would be then a little pocket page like that so it's flush with the back and then the pocket is there so I might stitch this on the sewing machine so I'm just going to keep that to one side and then we can take that to the sewing machine so let's take another sheet I'm just having a look what sheets I've got here because I want to have um, a variety of size pages so it might be that some pages are going to suit cutting into smaller pages than others if that makes sense so this page here again just going to take it down there like that okay now shall we make this another pocket page I'm just going to have a look and see what the pages are this one is a very plain one so this one definitely I could cut that down anywhere it wouldn't matter this is that collage page which again possibly would be better as a whole page so I'm just seeing what else we've got this one here which I mean I'm guessing we could cut this actually into smaller pages so I'm just going to put the ones that I can cut into smaller pages to one side like that okay and then we've got this one here which again yeah we could definitely definitely do something with these okay right so yeah I think these ones I'm going to keep as the sort of full size that they are 
So just want to see whether I want to have another pocket here because, you know, the pockets are quite nice to obviously be able to put ephemera and things like that in. So I'm again just going to fold that in that way. Okay, so again, just going to stitch that with the sewing machine. Then I've got this one here, which, oh, which way round do I want this? Uh, just going to have a sip of my tea while I decide. Um, I probably, well, actually, I think what I might do is I'm just going to cut this little slither off where it's got the the borderless that didn't print borderless. So the non-borderless border, take that down there. And then, yeah, I might have this one folded inwards because otherwise all my heavy pattern is kind of like facing the same way, which, yeah, I might prefer to have this one in this way like that. Okay. And then again, might just fold this out for a sort of pocket here like that. So again, just going to stitch that on the sewing machine. Like that. Okay. So yeah, that looks nice, doesn't it? Right. So those ones I'm taking to the sewing machine. Now these ones here, what I want to do is actually make smaller pages because I want to have some irregular size pages in here. So this one, for instance, here, it's kind of lending itself to being cut or folded anyway along that center line. So I'm just going to then cut that down. <clears throat> Oops, like that. Okay, now this I think as well needs a bit of trimming because it's just mucked up that border again, which is really annoying. Okay. So that's a, you know, a smaller page there that we've got. And then I want to do some smaller pages, um, you know, smaller this way, if that makes sense. So this one, yeah, I probably would struggle to do that because it would be sideways on. So this one here, let's do this as a smaller page. So again, just deciding which way I want to have this. Um... Yeah, I guess that would be okay. Uh, actually, will it be okay? Let me just check. No, probably better off doing it this way. So, yeah. Just cut that down like that. And then I'm going to cut this like in half this way to make some irregular pages. So, let's just take this down here. Okay. And then I'm just going to cut it roughly, yeah, roughly here. Just so I've got some interesting different size pages going on inside the book. So yeah, like that and, and like that, okay. Right, I can just have another bit of my tea, this one. Again, just cut off the the border that isn't, or the border that is, perhaps I should say, was not supposed to be, but the border that actually is. So we're just going to cut that down, and then again, just take that in like that, and just trim that down. And the other thing that you could do, actually, and I hadn't even thought of this until just now, but you could print these, like, say, two to a page. And that way you'd have the entire prints, but smaller. So that would be another really nice way to do this if you're wanting to have a mixture of size pages. Right, I might do this there. Okay, that one. And that one. Okay, last one, right, last one. This one, so of course this one could be you know, cut anywhere because it's not really got a definite, well, I mean, it's got a definite pattern, but it's not got any particular 
objects or items on it. So yeah, you can just cut this one down. And then just take this down here like that. Okay. <clears throat> so I'll just cut this like there. Okay. And then I think what I might do is round the corners, maybe not of all the pages, we'll see, but just so that we've got a few with roundy, roundy edges. So let's just take that there. <clears throat> okay. And this one. Oh dear. Oops. And this one. Okay. And then, yeah, round these two. Let me just empty my punch. Okay. So I'm not rounding the corners of the the spine edge, if you see what I mean, the folded edge. I'm just rounding the corners here of the outer edges. Oops. Might leave that one square so that I've got some different looks going on. Okay, right. Just have to quickly finish my tea. And then just take these couple here. Okay. And that one. And this one here. And then these might just do a couple of these as well. Now, these are obviously going to be the same height as my cover. So what I might do is just take them down like literally a fraction. So they're just fractionally smaller than the cover. Um, I mean, again, don't have to. There's no reason why they couldn't be the same height, I guess, as the cover. Oh, actually, maybe I'd prefer to have them the same height as the cover. So yeah, perhaps I won't do that with the others. So I'm just going to round just one half. And then these ones here, okay, so this is my pocket. So again, just going to round the one side like that. And this one. Okay, oops. My punch, it gets stuck quite often, which is, yeah, funny, because uh, the other one that's like this doesn't seem to do that or didn't do this quite so soon. Right, now I'm going to take these across to my sewing machine and obviously, like I say, just stitch some of these bits in. And then I think what I want to do is obviously stitch them into, you know, into the cover. Um, yeah, making a sort of like little, little journal-y book there. So you can probably see my flap, obviously it needed to have the, just that extra space. It may even actually be that it's not enough space, you know, that I've given it. Um, but just a bit of bit of space there. Um, right, okay, I will be back. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine. And so what I've got now is my little basic journal here with all the pages stitched in. Now I have to say, I did make a mistake in that I stitched along here by a mistake. But actually as well, I hadn't noticed that it had stopped stitching. So I've now got a run of holes, which is a bit of a shame. But having said that, once we've decorated and everything, you know, that won't really be... Well, hopefully it won't really be that noticeable. Um, but yeah, a bit of a shame. I would have preferred, obviously, not to have done that. But hey-ho, never mind. Now, I then thought what I might like to do is actually cover the whole of the inside with fabric. Because that's going to then reinforce my cover. Um, just to make it a little bit more sturdy. So I'm just going to stick the fabric down across here. So, and I'm obviously concentrating a lot on the, the creases. So wherever there's a crease, sort of concentrating extra on that. But yeah, kind of like going all around the whole thing. So like that. Okay. And then I'm just going to put my fabric down on there. Oops. And then obviously I'm going to then take that to the sewing machine as well and stitch, stitch the fabric in place. So, oops, like that. So again, just 
can spread that with my glue spreader a bit. Obviously, it's fabric, so it's not quite so straightforward as, you know, sticking with paper, but it's fine. So, yeah. And then I'm just going to cut around. Oops. And then I can just take it all to the sewing machine and stitch it all down. So, like that. Down here. Oops. Like that. And yeah, across here. Like that. Okie dokie. So I'm just going to take this back to the sewing machine. Now, I have to say, I haven't quite decided whether I want to actually stitch my signature in or just have like sort of elastic or something going around. So yeah, I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to try and do the stitching from this side so as I've got the attractive stitching on the, on the cover. So hold on. Okay, so I'm back from the sewing machine and this is how it now looks. So how pretty is that? Now this fabric has been coffee dyed, um, I have to say. So, you know, it really looks grungy and kind of ties right in with the um coffee dyed pages so yeah i mean i just love the look of this and you know we've not even not even finished it but yeah it looks really 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 pretty already um so yeah that's kind of basically all that's going to be you know going on in here and i think then now i just want to kind of decorate it up now i've got to say i was wondering about actually mixing this with some book page now where did i put the book that i had grabbed because I actually thought that this would go pretty nicely with one of those Enid Blyton books. So, oh, what have I done with that? Ah, there it is. So I've got this one here, Mr. Pink Whistle, Miss, oh, sorry, can't see, Mr. Pink Whistle's Party. Um, so the images in this book are just perfect, perfect size to have with this journal. So if I just tear one out here, I mean, how gorgeous is that? And I just thought we could make a couple of little pockets and things to put on some of these pages from this little book. So, for instance, this one, if I just take it down slightly more, like that, okay. And then we just want to have it kind of cut down to size, so I'm just going to cut it down now, like that, and yeah, like that, and just on this side a little bit as well. Okay, so that would just fit on there just perfectly as a little pocket, and I thought this was just a really nice way to mix things up in this little journal. So. All I'm going to do, obviously, is just glue this together. And then again, I probably would take all of these pockets that I make across to the sewing machine and stitch around them. And then, of course, I'll glue the pockets onto the pages. So I'm going to just stitch around here and then we'll glue this pocket down because I just thought the stitching would look, you know, would look really pretty and kind of finish it off. And again, actually what we could do is just to get the kind of consistency, we could just round the corners like that. How gorgeous is that? So I'm just going to tear out a few little pages that we might want to have as pockets. So that's a really, really nice one. And then let's pick another one. Now, for some reason, I would probably prefer to use, um, actually, no, yeah, ignore what I was about to say. <laughs> yep, completely ignore what I was about to say. Um, no, should we do this one? And then any others, any others, any others? And that one's quite cute. So yeah, I'm just going to fold these and then cut them down so as we've got some nice little pockets there. And 
can cut this one down or fold this one, sorry. Like that. And this one here. Like that. Okay, and then I'm just going to trim these down like that. <clears throat> And of course, don't have to round the um, corners, but I think they're nice with the corners rounded. So this one, I might not round the corners because I might have this as a top loading pocket. And the reason for that is because, you know here where the two pages meet, I prefer not to have that as the edge of the pocket side that makes sense so the part that you actually then use as the pocket I would prefer not to use the folded edge because uh, the the you know where the paper meets basically the reason being is just because and even if you've glued it and stitched it on the sewing machine it often then has just a little section where it doesn't quite meet and then when you're tucking things in and out of that pocket it's just slightly more likely to get um you know, damaged than if you use the pocket side, uh, the folded side, obviously, as the pocket. I know that was very waffly and long-winded, but hopefully that made sense. So I'm trying to avoid using this edge, but using this folded edge instead. So again, just go around there. And then finally this one. Okay, and then just like that. Okay, and then again, just going to round all my corners so the pockets all have a really nice flow to them, like that. And then this one, I should just round the top corners because it's like almost in the reverse, like that. And then what we might do as well is again for consistency, just make a couple of clusters using some of these images so again just like pulling out some pages or some images that might lend themselves to being clusters so I'm looking for things like you know where I could just tear out say a little figure or two so like this one Oops, I actually tore out two pages but I can just tear this girl out See what I mean? Like that. And she will then be sat on the cluster. Now I've got obviously a couple more characters here, so I could do the same with those. And then they'll be, you know, a focus point or a feature, feature on the cluster. So I'll do that for a couple of these as well. So uh, let's have a look. Um, just finding kind of, you know, the best pictures that I think for these. Okay. And this one's quite a good one. I'm going to tear that down. Like that, and this one. I don't know if this one's brilliant, but you know, we'll see. It looks okay, doesn't it? So yeah, that's my little pieces for clusters. So what I'm going to do is, you know all those little bits that we cut off? I'm just going to tear some little scrappy pieces to make my clusters with. So like that and then for instance this boy I just need to tear him down because he's a bit on the big side at the moment because I mean obviously this is not the biggest journal on the planet so I don't really want massive massive great big clusters so just kind of something like that and then do we want a bit of fabric behind him or do we want like a bit of lace? So yeah, let's just 
do a little bit of fabric I think first okay. like that keep it nice and fray looking like that yeah and then I think what I might do is just stitch across these on the sewing machine so that's one keep all my bits for the sewing machine just one side one then we're going to do another one so again we've got this one here can I just tear this little bit down like that okay and then this one like that and again just grab some more fabric like that okay like that and obviously you know I will fiddle around with these when I get to the machine so um yeah, they'll probably be altered yet. So this one here. So it's a good way to use up, obviously, the bits that we've, you know, cut off and didn't obviously need. We're not kind of letting anything go to waste like that. Okay, so I'm going to do all of those on the sewing machine. And then I think the other thing that I would like to do, whilst I'm just over there at the sewing machine as well, is just, again, using up some more of these bits is just maybe do some little banners to have hanging down the pages. So again, just going to cut this down and then just cut a couple of banner pieces. So there's one and let's see, maybe this one. So this piece I can obviously use completely as it is. So just going to cut that out like that okay mm. like that so you know we're really using up everything we're not wasting anything because you know we hate waste don't we so yeah just using up everything i can like that okay so i don't need to take that to the sewing machine or anything but i'll just put that to one side so again just going to make a little banner here from this one okay oh that's very pointy yep okay it's a bit better oh dear that one's massive isn't it in comparison so let's just bring that in a bit okay right and yeah, do we want to do any other banners? Yeah, let's do a couple more. So this one. this one now actually for this I might make a little tab I think for the side of the page so just going to fold this over Oops, like that. Okay. so squish this one down And then just do my little corners with my punch. One and two. So that's a little tab there. And then this one, I can just do another little tab as well. Like that. Okay, so I mean, I really have got very minimal waste here. 
you know, from the bits that we've cut off, I've really kind of made use of pretty much everything, which is awesome. Okay, oh, come on. So one and two. Okay. Right, this piece, um, yes, ridiculously, I'm now hoarding this. I mean, what is wrong with me? <laughs> Yay! Well, it was bound to happen, wasn't it, sooner or later? Oh, do you know I've got a load more pages here that I've not even used? Well, that's fine. We can make some other things with those. Yeah, I don't know how I missed those, to be honest, when we were constructing the journal, but hey. Obviously, um, yeah, missed them somehow. So then the only other thing that I think I might do is take a few of these... So this, unfortunately, where my printer, you know, mucks up when it prints borderless when the paper's too thick. It's kind of like shifted off the paper. So I'm just going to take this and then all I'm going to do is just stitch a couple of these pieces onto some fabric. So they're a bit like the clusters, you know, that we made, obviously, or, well, that we've assembled, ready to take to the sewing machine but they're just using some of the ephemera pieces of the kit. So, just like that. And like that. And then all I'm going to do is just pop them onto here. So, just going to tear this down slightly smaller, like that. Okay. Right, so yeah, and again, we're just gonna glue this all down, you know, just so that then when we take it to the sewing machine, it's kind of on there. I'm not having to then think, oh, what did I put with what? It's just like on there, ready to be stitched. So that one, and then this one here, which actually I could probably do with this thinner strip here like that okay so yeah oh dear like that that's it and then I'm just going to take them like I say across to the sewing machine and stitch around some of those bits and then all of these bits can go in the bin so yeah really you know hardly any waste at all and then of course we've got all these background pages which I'd somehow missed and forgotten about that we can obviously make some other little pull out pieces and things like that that we can obviously you know put inside the the journal as well so right I will be back okay I'm back from the sewing machine and what I did I just took some of those little offcuts of fabric and I've just kind of ruffled them on the sewing machine as well onto these little pockets just for a bit of extra kind of detail really so all I'm going to do is go through the journal and pop some of these little bits and pieces. Oh, look what I did. I forgot to take that one. Oh, well, I'll have to go back and um, obviously do that one. But yeah, so all I want to do is go back through the journal and just pop some of these little pockets into position on some of these pages. So for instance, this one, oops forgot that it wasn't attached to the cover and I thought at first oh my goodness look at how wonky that is thankfully it was actually not that it was wonky it was just it wasn't actually wasn't actually attached to the cover so yeah so I'm just going to go in and just pop some of these little pockets down whoops onto the pages like that okay like that so how pretty does that look and we've just got tiny little kind of um hint of the fabric kind of coming out underneath which just looks really really pretty doesn't it and yeah just love how that how that looks so i'm just going to go through the whole journal just adding bits and pieces oops i'm sorry i was just checking that i'd actually put that high enough on that page so that pocket wasn't you know hanging down on here and it was so yeah luckily luckily i've moved it up now so just literally popping them in in some random random points throughout the journal like that Oops. actually I'm now wondering uh, oh I'm wondering actually was this supposed to be my top one I think 
That was going to be my top loading pocket. Yep, I think it was. So I'm just going to wipe that glue off. And yeah, I want to have this as a top loading pocket. So what I might do is put it, put it here, do I want it up there? Yeah, might put it on that one. Like that. Okay. So it's up there and obviously then the bottom is the tuck space. So I will be tucking things in at the bottom rather than a top top pocket if you see what I mean things will go in here instead so yeah and then I've got my little tab which of course obviously you know probably should go on one of the smaller pages because otherwise I'm going to you know have a problem because the tab will be then in the way when it's wanting to open and close so I'm gonna have it that way around but actually I prefer it this way so yeah just hot glue this one into place because I oops, want it to glue straight away. Sorry, just need to put another glue stick into my hot glue gun. Oh, I hope I've got some hot glue sticks right here. Oh, honestly, I feel like I only put some in here the other day in this drawer. Don't tell me I'm out already. Oh dear. Right, okay. Nope, no hot glue sticks in there. Honestly, I must go through them so quickly. I mean, I don't. I I know I do use the hot glue a lot, but my goodness, I haven't obviously factored quite how much, obviously. So yeah, we'll just wet glue this. I just like to use the hot glue really for the tabs because um, it saves me, you know, having to hold them for any length of time, making sure that they're closed. But, you know, it's not the end of the world, to be honest. So, yeah, let's just press that like that. Okay. Like that. Okay. And then, obviously, I've got my little clusters here, which, again, we could obviously add some other bits and pieces to to make them a bit more interesting. So, I'm just going to ink this up slightly. Like that, okay. And then, yeah, we're going to have these as little tuck spots on some of these pages. So, I mean, I could have, like here on this, which obviously is a pocket, we could have a little tuck there. Um, I might prefer it here, actually. Yeah, I might prefer it there. So, I'm just going to have a look and see, because I've got those little flowers that I've got from Amazon. And I'm just wondering whether if I just ink this up a bit so it's a bit more grungy, a bit less bright, because obviously all my papers have been coffee dyed. So I want it to sort of tie in colour wise. And yeah, that's just, oh, oh, come on. Come on, come on. These small ones are definitely <laughs> much more fiddly than the big ones. You know, I mean, obviously they would be, but yeah. Kind of like fiddly to handle. So all I'm going to do, so if you can see, I've just stitched across there, but I'm just going to then staple the flower into place as well, like that. And then I'm just going to, oh, again, I'm out of hot glue, must try and remember that. Just going to hot, uh, wet glue, as I haven't got my hot glue here, on two sides, so that this will be then a little tuck spot that I can put you know, like a tag or something into there. So that's it, basically. I'm just going to get it, oh, continue. Sorry, can't talk now. Continue on the same um, vein throughout this whole little journal. And then, of course, what I would do is take some of the ephemera pieces from the kit. This is probably going to be too big, but... Again, obviously all of these have been printed on the 250 GSM sort of thickish paper slash card. But take all of the ephemera pieces and oops, add them to the pockets and the tucks. Like I say, yeah, this one's actually too big for there. But I'm just going to pop it in there like that. 
So yeah, on that note, my phone's now ringing. So I hope that you like the kit and everything and I will be back with some more to show you on this journal. So thank you so much for watching and see you guys soon. Thanks then, bye.